Okay, here is a um, an example of how our State Department works. How they select and put people in positions an overthrow. I mean, if you are familiar with what they're trying to do in Venezuela, their MO is what, just like what they did in Ukraine, as they went in there and overthrow, overthrew, excuse me, I'm very tired. Probably should have a sip of something. They went over there and overthrew the government. Being the dictators they are, they selected a new prime minister or president, whatever they call them over there, for the Ukrainians, and then then went out and killed a bunch of Ukrainian Russians. So the next time the vote came around, and this is true, um, the vote would come out how the United States wanted it, wanted it. And yes, that's why they were over there killing civilians. Um, we were killing the Russian, Ukrainian, or Ukrainian Russians. I don't want to insult anybody. Civilians in Ukraine to kill off the voters. I mean, mercenaries even made videos about it, warning America and telling us when they were going to be here. Anyways, um, this document shows how our State Department works, so it should leave you with no doubt that United States of Evil is what it, it is. <laughs> and they lie. Everything that rolls out of their mouth is a lie. They're working with the Muslim Brotherhood here, which, when they work with them, they're, oh, they're buddies. Oh, we're all friends. And then when they don't have any use for them, they go on the terrorist watch, watch list. And I just did a 15-minute or 14-minute rant about the same thing. I'm not going to repeat myself, so I'm just going to go ahead and let this read out. And um, I I talked about how um, these evil ruling elite, I call them the ERES. So when you see that term, that's what it means because I'm tired of explaining it. Um, they want to go back to the Dark Ages. And the Dark Ages are when the king went out, because he owned all the property, just like the Rothschilds own your property, even if you have a mortgage. And because you're treasonous leaders, allowed the banking cartel to use verbiage that basically says, you're paying the rent, the air in the house. And that's about all. That's all you own is the air in the house and nothing else. So, when the shit hits the fan, you don't have any property. You, you don't own it. If you think you're going to farm off of it or live off of it or whatever, you, you don't own it. Anyways, without further ado, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and play this. Um, you know, I had like 20 videos, and all it had to do was to be, um, uh, what was I going to say, um, trimmed and edited, <laughs> and the trim is not working, it crashed, and, and I wound up having to do a lot of them over, and yeah, some of them are old, but there are a lot, a good examples to give people the the good idea the clear eyes wide open idea and realization 
just how evil U.S. Jew Inc. is in D.C. and how it has grown to be the monstrous, evil, perverted nest of demons it is today. I mean, no text to read. I mean, no text to read. Oh, don't tell me now this is not working. Okay, well, it's not reading the text now. How about that? Oh, that's so nice. Mine doesn't want to... No text to read. Turn the page. Just look at that. Now it doesn't want to work. Oh, come on. I mean, no text to read. Oh, brother. Well, anyways... On November 24, 2011, senior officials of the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood, MB, including MB Supreme Guide, Mohammed, is that Babe? Abedi? Abedi? I don't know. Received discreet notice that the ruling Supreme Council of Armed Forces, SCAF, intended to name... I can't even read this. It's so small. Kamal E. Ghazari as Prime Minister in a new interim government of national unity. <laughs> okay, anyways. Um, This one goes on number three. It talks about how they're going to dispose <laughs> dispose of the current president. <laughs> okay. In this page, they're talking about how they're trying to uh, decide on who to put, I think, in the second seat over there. Because they have a president and a prime minister. I guess that's the way it goes. Um, and one person prefers one person to prefers is the other okay well here's the other one here it says it's that the MB leader added that he expects uh, <clears throat> November 28 primary elections to proceed as planned and MB winning 35 to 40 percent of the seats all that point to the MBI leaders I believe they will be in a better position to deal with scarf in their discreet relationship. Well, we all know what happens, but this is just an example to, sh to show you that uh, our State Department had no problem working with the Muslim Brotherhood. And here's the document number. Hopefully you can clearly see it. Uh, C0613475. If you want to download it yourself, it is unclassified as you see there it's unclassified thank you for listening um i know a lot of this news is just terrible but we all have to face it we really do we all really have to face it and i know the betrayal part is really difficult and it will remain difficult <laughs> you know i grew up with um my dad served in two wars he has a secretive military record he's passed away now and yeah, and I tried to get his records, and they were all burned in the fire. <laughs> oh, both of them. He served in two wars. 
in his paperwork, the only paperwork I got, it says he only served nine months each, which was crazy. Um, because he was shot down in uh, North Korea in the jungle. Because that's the only stories he ever told us. But, uh, what was I going to say about it? Was... I guess I'm really tired. There was a reason why I brought that up. Oh, yes. He, he used to tell us exactly how it was. And how the U.S. government was and is. He said that uh, JFK's wife actually killed JFK and you know when I look at those pictures it looks like that she stuck a small handgun under his chin and shot him I mean it does look like that to me well a lot of people used to think um my dad was crazy but a lot of things he said was came true I remember when Marilyn Monroe died he was he talked about how they were passing her around and he even knew about the Castro thing so and he also knew how dirty our government was I guess maybe because of the the operations he used to run and uh, what the hell was he doing over in North Korea anyways I don't know I'll never know he didn't really talk about a whole lot of things uh, like that just uh, the man-eating plants in North Korea But he had night terrors. I mean, screaming night terrors. I mean, he was so fractured. He had a couple of personalities. You know, you send those soldiers over there to kill children. And in Yemen, that's what we're doing. Whether they bomb them from a boat or not. In 09, 50% of the military force in Yemen were children. How much of a threat could they possibly be? And as U.S. Jew Inc., United States of Evil, sit there and talk about how awful Yemen is, And they're just, they, 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 I mean, we all know they're starving to death. But they're just, they're bombing children soldiers. And the only reason they're children soldiers is because of what the U.S., United States of evil, which includes Israel and uh, Saudi Arabia, did and are, is doing. Just like what they're trying to do to Iran, what they're doing to Venezuela. And again, if you haven't read that article about that uh, interview in 1986 with Trump, um, find it and I'll see if I can find a link to it and uh, read it. Because he is a cold hearted mofo. Starve him into obedience is that's what his plan is and if you have eyes to see that's what he plans to do to Americans because what he's doing right now with the tariffs and the weather millions of acres of farmland in America has been destroyed he's putting high tariffs on imports coming in and we import a lot of food because we don't grow a, a lot of our food um, because well we do grow a lot of food but we don't keep it here to make sure the people are fed first in the United States because it's a profit it's for profit um, so Trump is setting the American people up to face famine and it looks like we're probably 